so in the third case the delta is uh, less than zero so whenever it's a uh, less than zero so the, the the center term is less than zero so whenever it's less than zero it will give some complex roots so this can be written as a uh, s1 gamma s2 equal to minus c uh, before uh, writing this form uh, i would like to simplify this equation so from the previous uh, equation what we can write is uh, um, this you know xi we already defined xi equal to c by cc where cc is the critical damping so cc equal to 2m omega n omega n into m so from this from this equation um, we can write c by 2m equal to j into omega n because we wanted to substitute this value in this one here also and then here also and we know k by m equal to omega n square so when i substitute these two values and here this since this is a negative one since this is a negative one what happened this is sign will change so this term will come to here and uh, this term will come to here so yes one comma two equal to and uh, here we have a minus one so square root of minus one will give a plus uh, i mean i so here what will be it will become omega into z into omega n so plus or minus i into so here actually here it will come z omega n but since we have taken minus one as a common here or we multiplied with the minus one to convert this as a positive then this term will come to here and this term will come to here so when it comes to here it will become omega n square minus z square omega n square and here if i take omega n square common it will become one minus z square and i will call this entire term as a omega d where d is the damping so since we applied some damping here in the natural frequency is uh, modified so here natural the frequency of the system is uh, this one you know omega n into multiplication of 1 by z square here if the so if uh, if this you know damping in the system is zero then automatically z will become zero then uh, omega d equal to omega n omega d will become omega n but since we have a uh, damping in the system no longer omega d will be equal to the omega n and um, uh, so now i will write the solution that is uh, d1 into e power minus uh, s1 so minus s1 is z uh, into omega n plus uh, i into omega d so i am multiplying whole thing with the t because uh, we if you recall like this is a uh, initial we no i started the solution only by assuming this equation that is a e power d into e power st and uh, e power minus i omega n is common and here i whenever i is there we can write to uh, in terms of uh, cos and uh, sin theta so it will become d and uh, i will take you know d1 and d2 common so if you can recollect from the previous session so i am skipping this step so you, if you want if you have any doubts you just refer to the previous one so i am directly writing here in, with the new variables a into cos omega d actually here we have omega d so if you observe here we have omega d so we are writing for the this term because i is between you know before this term so um, here t is missing so i am so omega d into t plus converted how by multiplying and dividing with the square root of a square plus b square so it is uh, you know again similar to the you know procedure followed when we solve for the free vibrations if you have any doubts you just refer to that one and i will call the new new constant new constant as a a where a is the amplitude into minus j omega n t into so sin of it will become sin of omega d t plus phi so this is the final equation for the damped vibrations and if you observe we have a sign term but in the you know, you know both previous cases we don't have a sign term we have only exponential term but here we have a sign term also that means this 
motion is a more harmonic so this is where we really this is where we really interested because when the motion is exponential and as you increase you know as you move or you know, Uh, when the time increases automatically the amplitude is becoming zero but here the amplitude is not becoming zero uh, not tending to zero but instead it's a it's a harmonic of course over the period it also will decrease because here we have a exponential uh, decreasing exponential multiplying the harmonic function so that's why here also ultimately we will you know uh, our amplitude would be reduced but how that would be reduced and how much time it will take and uh, how much amplitude will uh, change from one cycle to another cycle we need to see you now in the uh, preceding sessions and uh, here in this equation as like in the previous one what are the what are the unknowns here one unknown is this one amplitude a and another uh, unknown is uh, phi and uh, if you observe here this is a omega yet and that is a natural frequency how to calculate natural frequency so whenever you want to find a natural frequency omega n you just neglect the psi and uh, it's a simply square root of k by n but here in here the omega d term is uh, before the time so unlike in the previous case here omega d but in the previous case when free vibration this is a omega n so what is the omega d again we need to use this formula and here when you want to find out the time period of this function so that is a simply 2 pi by 2 pi by you know um 2 pi by coefficient of the variable here variable is t so that is a omega d so this is the time period now it's not omega n 